from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Tuesday, October the 18th, 2022. Thanks for checking us out on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Louis Butko here with you as the Thai Cats returned to practice for the first time since Friday's big win in Calgary and ahead of Friday's big game here at Tim Hortons Field. Why is it a big game? Well, uh, as we know, the Thai Cats control their own destiny and uh, can knock out the Red Blacks of the playoff picture. They can't clinch with the win. Uh, they would need some help later on in the weekend when Calgary takes on Saskatchewan. They can clinch this weekend, uh, but they can't do it on Friday. But uh, a win would go a long way to booking their spot in the uh, postseason, that's for sure. And hopefully you'll join us here at Tim Hortons Field. It uh, should be a uh, fantastic uh, day, evening here, uh, at, at weather-wise, first of all. Uh, a lot better than the weather we've had the last few days with this rain and coldness. Uh, but it's also our last home game of the regular season, and it's our fan appreciation night. So you can enter the stadium before 6.30, and you'll have a shot at a 2023 Grey Cup Festival package that includes a pair of tickets to the Grey Cup game at Tim Hortons Field. Tie Cats, Red Blacks this Friday night. The Made in the Hammer game returns. And I was just talking about this with uh, Steve Milton just outside the uh, press box here at uh, Tim Hortons Field. Uh, we are like 12 and a half months away from the Grey Cup, which is being here in Hamilton, I should say, again, uh, which is which is uh, insane. I, I can't believe it's October 18th, first of all. Don't get me started on uh, you know how fast this year has gone. Uh, but yeah, the Grey Cup coming back to Hamilton in just over 12 months' time. And uh, you know the only way to guarantee your spot is by becoming a uh, season seat member. And you can do that at ticats.ca slash tickets. All right, coming up on today's show, we'll hear from the head coach and president of football ops, Orlando Steinauer. Uh, we'll hear from Julian Hauser, and we'll hear from Lawrence Woods the third as well. And later on, we'll get some Tuesday morning salutations when Coach Sal, John Salavantis, joins the program. Uh, just a little something from our news and notes. And you know what? That's not fair. It's not a little something. It's a big something. As uh, for the second week in a row, the Ticats have a pair of players named top performers. Uh, last week it was uh, second and third. This time it is number one and number two. As Richard Leonard was named the CFL's top performer for his two interception, including the 64-yard pick six. As it was his fourth career multi-interception game, his third career touchdown, and he had nine total tackles, uh, adding to a, what's already been a great season for Richard Leonard. And Tim White was named a top performer as well. He had six catches for 106 yards and one touchdown. Oh, but that uh, that touchdown was, uh, was a big one. It was the game-winning uh, touchdown. It was his fifth 100-yard receiving game this season. And it was his second top performer honor of the year as well. He's got a career high already in catches, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Uh, We'll check in with Tim later on this week to talk about the honor and uh, just his season so far. Because it seems like every week we're talking about a uh, a new milestone that uh, that, that Tim White is hitting. He has been one of the great, great storylines of the Ticats this season. Of course, as you know, top five in receiving yards with 1,152, and he is uh, also top five in touchdowns. He's got eight touchdowns on the year. Uh, Dalton Schoen, the uh, rookie out of Winnipeg, uh, leading the category, leading both categories in that. Uh, he's got yards, but uh, Tim White is leading the league in receptions. He's got 87. That's two more than Montreal's Eugene Lewis. As mentioned, the Ticats were back at practice for the first time. So this was technically day two uh, when we caught up with Coach after practice today. I asked him about the schedule this week. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, we just feel at this point for our football team, it's always the pulse uh, that you have of your team. And uh, for us, uh, fresher is going to be better. And so um, he also gave the coaches another day to really solidify the game plan. And, you know, the players were still locked in. A lot of players were around the facility uh, taking care of their body, getting getting things in order. So uh, that's just the direction we chose. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go back to the three-day prep week next week. It's the process, honestly. It just is. It's 
you know, you, 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 we're not going to stand up here lock kneed. We're going to be, we're going to bend. We're going to be flexible. But there's just certain things that we stand on in times of adversity, and that's why you keep the messaging consistent. Um, and you know, obviously, the players got to execute, and uh, it's just a credit to everybody. And you know, but the bottom line is, is we haven't we haven't done enough yet to to get to what the, our ultimate goal is, and what what every team's goal is. We got to handle business this week, so all the focus is ahead, and not what we've done in the past, but what we're going to do moving forward. Can't fool you. It is. I think it's great. It's a great token. You know, I think uh, when you turn on those plays that were made, there was amazing protection, and we were able to get the ball off. Dane delivered a great football. Uh, Tim came down with it. And I think when you look at uh, Rich's interceptions, the pressure, things that don't show up in the stat sheet, the pressure, um, and as we like to say, being close counts, the pressure um, really made them step up and – you know, then obviously you get to the individual accolade and, and Rich made his play. So we always emphasize making your play. And he did. And, it, you know, the defense really kept us in the game in the first half. And then the offense came out to the start of the third quarter and handled their business. That's for Julian. He's solid. He's, he's consistent. Not a raw, raw guy. He just comes to work. You know, blue collar, pack your lunch, stay consistent, know what you can count on, know what you're getting. And even on his interception, you're going to see pressure on the quarterback where we beat the back, ran through the back, hit the quarterback. And so, you know, individuals always get recognized and fill up the stat sheet, but it's the ultimate team sport. Uh, can't say enough. I don't have enough time enough time to uh, say great things about House there. He knows, he knows his worth and how, how I and we feel about him. Yeah, I think the first and foremost thing that we've, we did well there is we didn't take a penalty. Right? There just wasn't enough time to make a mistake like that. And then, you know, we did a decent job of, of getting on a body art. We definitely didn't block it up perfect. Uh, but when you have a returner that's dynamic like that back there, sometimes you don't have to. You can just screen people, uh, maybe just get in the way a little bit. And, uh, you know, he made an outstanding play. But, um, yeah, the, the blocking, again, there you go with the ultimate team sport. And, and you need everybody to get the job done collectively. So, um, yeah, I just can't say enough, the, timely, the timeliness of it. And you're going to win different ways. And... That's a great football team, not a good football team. Uh, they were fresh coming off the bye, and, you know, we got a couple of bounces, had a couple of bounces not go our way. But like I said, you know, we ha did what we had to do to put ourselves in this position, and, you know, we study and review it, but we're moving forward. We're, we're out the windshield right now. That is the head coach and president of football ops, Orlando Steinauer, as we caught up with him earlier today we also had a chance to catch up with julian hauser he had his second interception of the season uh, also provided some great pressure and you heard coach talk about that as well uh in the two richard leonard interceptions and uh, caught up with him after practice today here's what he had to say um yeah there's definitely a sense of urgency i mean it's hard to replace guys like that who are you know playing at a high level um all season long but um you know we're pretty you know, we're lucky to have good depth on the D-line and, uh, you know, the young guys stepped up and, you know, all we ask is you do your job and, you know, let the rest take care of itself. Um, you know, I just dropped into my, uh, drop, dropped into my uh, coverage there and, um, you know, they always say about looking up the route, so I looked it up, saw it coming. Uh, we got great pressure on the quarterback, forced him to throw it and, you know, just made my play. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's just, you know, every week, um, you know, getting pressure on the quarterback, it just, it does so many things. It makes him uncomfortable. You know, it helps the guys in, uh, in the back, you know, make their plays and, you know, force bad passes. And, you know, we always preach, you know, taking the ball away and turnovers. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, like I said earlier, we have a lot of depth and, uh, you know, Okafor, you know, played D-line for, what, one week, two weeks, you know, and, you know, got his chance and, you know, he, he played great in there and uh, most stepped up. Um, Chris stepped up. We had a lot of guys step up, and, you know, that just goes to, you know, show you that, you know, our room is deep and we have a lot of playmakers in there. Absolutely. You know, like, uh, you know, obviously the season didn't start the way we wanted it to, but, you know, every week it's just like, all right, now we're going to, you know, we're going to start here and we're going to get rolling, you know, one game at a time. And, yeah, it definitely, definitely helped. And, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, you're seeing that now. I mean, he's a, he's another one. He's a great player, and, you uh, he got his opportunity and he uh, he ran with it and you know it's nothing that we didn't expect you know you knew he was uh, you knew he was a really good player and it just took it just took it uh, you know just getting his opportunity and uh, you know he made the most of it that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think why we're you know you know rolling right now is where you just you know have a one game approach and 
Um, we don't like to look ahead and, you know, we just look at every week the same and, you know, prepare, prepare accordingly and, you know, do what we got to do. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to love playing here. There's no, uh, there's no better atmosphere than, you know, playing here at home and, uh, you know, the crowd gets into it, they get loud and there's no better way than the end, uh, end of year on a, um, on a home victory for our last home game. And that is Julian House there talking about the uh, made in the hammer game there at the end. That, of course, is this Friday as the Ticats play their last game of the year here at uh, Tim Hortons Field. Uh, it's the last home game of the regular season. It's also fan appreciation night. Enter the stadium by 630 and you can win great prizing throughout the game, including game worn hammer jerseys and autographed Danny McManus and Flutie jerseys. Ty Cats and Red Blacks this Friday night. The Made in the Hammer game returns. Uh, one more piece of audio to get to from after practice today. I had a chance to catch up with Lawrence Woods the third, who had that big play to set up the game-winning drive, that big return to set up the uh, game-winning drive for the Ty Cats. And uh, here's what he had to say about that return. Yeah, for sure. It was just like, you know what I'm saying, I feel like it was time for, it was time for my play to happen. You know what I'm saying? All throughout the game, we were just <clears throat> making sure we uh, – Fielded the ball, you know what I'm saying, cleanly. And then this was the play that we needed. And so I was like, all right, let's go. I mean, it's really huge, you know, because, like, we talk, about, we talk about it all the time, even when we're on the field, like, hey, like, one or two blocks going to spring the big return, you know. And it's like everybody want to be that guy to make that block or to just, like, you know what I'm saying, to do that thing, to make a score, get us some good field position. And just, like, every time they do it, it's more of, like, I'm more happy for me, but I'm happy for them as well just because, like, I couldn't do it without them, you know, because, you know what I'm saying, the key three blocks that Tanowski had really wouldn't have let me bounce to the outside if he didn't do it, so. Are you surprised teams are still kicking to you? Oh, very surprised. Like, I mean, not to be, like, a little, you know what I'm saying, head, like, for she's but it's like, um, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, you just got a game plan, you know, and if you want to kick it to me, kick it to me, it's, you know what I'm saying, stuff going to happen. I feel like uh, stuff that I've, like, uh, honed in from, like, with the other vets is really just, like, finish and also, like, uh, basically make sure you, like, improving your craft every day, like, regardless of the reps you get in or regardless of, like, um, what's going on, like, externally that you can't control. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you try to get a little bit better improvement every day. It's like a little, a little saying I tell myself. It's, uh, it's called Kaizen. It's uh, continuous improvement, so. Uh, very intense, you know, <laughs> it was, uh, it's very intense and it's, it's not like a, a bad intense, it's more of like intense, like, all right, you need to get your job done because these are key, these not like, these not special team plays, there's offensive, defensive plays, so it's like when the, when we in the room, it's, it's a lot of focus, really just like offensive, defensive meetings, you know, and we talk it out and he, you know what I'm saying, we just go from there. And that is Lawrence Woods the third as we caught up with him after practice and as always, you go to tycats.ca for full scrums from after practice. All right, very pleased now to be joined by Coach Sal, John Salavantis, for some uh, Tuesday salutations. And uh, Coach, uh, I mean, that one was fun. We've talked about that. Uh, it was a big game for the Ticats and uh, a really well-played game for the Ticats. It was the first time this year, uh, Louis, uh, other than the Winnipeg game that I felt we played uh, extremely well in certain areas. Now, the whole game was not, you know, a great game. But at the same time, when it counted, when it got right down to it, you know, Woods makes a great run back on, on that uh, kickoff. Then you get a big pass down the middle. And then you get a touchdown out of it. Those were things we were looking for before in the fourth quarter, and we were not getting. There were a lot of game balls that could go around in, in that game. And, and I think it, it, we've got to look at it very positively. Yeah, I mean, really all three elements of the game, uh, all, at times in the game, had their moment to shine. I mean, Seth Small had the big field goal. He was four for four. Lawrence Woods on the big return. The defense in the first half. Offense in the second half. I mean, that was a, a quote-unquote team win in, in all facets at times. Yeah, and, and really there were some outstanding players, Leonard's. Uh, two interceptions in, in the ball game, nine tackles in the ball game. Hauser's uh, interception in the ball game was, was critical, you know. And and Dane Evans uh, not throwing any interceptions, uh, that was a key uh, in this ball game. Small being four for four, you know, you're not going to win if you don't kick those field goals. So, all in all, I, I really think it's a, a very positive 
uh, week to go into. And, and that brings me to the point of, of the coaching staff. When a coaching staff met, uh, in my opinion, the first thing they should have talked about was the positive things that happened. And they said, have set the tone for the week. We did a good job in all of these areas. Now, correct your mistake, guys, but do it with humor and do it with a smile and make sure that the errors that we made are corrected. But at the same time, be very positive with your team. Let's talk about some of those errors because uh, uncharacteristically these last few weeks, the Ticats have had a, a penalty issue. This late in the season, how do you address something like that? Well, penalties are, are basically individual things. You, you can't really uh, non-coach or coach penalties. Uh, you know, they happen in a ball game. What you've got to coach is composure. You cannot retaliate. You cannot make a mistake. For example, you're in a third down and two situation. What should happen on the field? Here, here's my way of thinking about it. First of all, the quarterback goes in the huddle and says to everybody, we need two yards. You know, all of us need reminders. You remember when your mom used to remind you when you go on the street, look both ways? Yes. Well, it became redundant, but it, that rem it obviously paid dividends because you're still here. <laughs> right. Yep. So the quarterback says in the huddle, you know, to the to the running back, cover the football, get me two yards. Nothing fancy on this play. O-line, get off the ball on time, and, and let's go out and, and get those two yards. That's the kind of thing that should happen in the huddle, and you've got to correct that mistake because third and two was critical, and we did not get it, and it could have cost us a game. Coach, after the game, defended that play call, said, you know, the wind didn't, you know, TV probably didn't do justify just how strong that wind was, and and they were kicking it into a very, like I said, stiff breeze. Your thoughts on, on I mean, I've forgotten more. Coach always forgot more about football than I will ever learn. Uh, just your thoughts on that play call. Well, that's exactly what I was trying to outline for you. It was that critical of a, of a decision, and the coach made that decision. Now it's up to the players to execute that play. You know, and, and so you go into the huddle and you make all these reminders to everybody you know, it may seem like it, it's uh, uh, something that you would talk to young, young people about, but the, these grown men need the same kind of reminders. Well, and, and you know, talking with Luke Tasker about this yesterday, it, it, the, the offense, they really, nobody's coming off that, nobody's jogging off onto the sidelines thinking like, well, we should have punted that. I mean, the offense does take that to heart when the coach trusts them to go out there and make that play. That's exactly right. And, and the trust goes both ways. You know, the, once the coach makes a decision, remember, you can only make one decision at a time. That's the only way you, you, you go. So he made the decision. It was up to the team then uh, to respond to that decision. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Tim White. Another 100-yard game uh, past the 1,000-yard mark uh, last week. Another big game. A couple of great catches, big catches, timely catches. I'm – it's it's tough because he doesn't remind me of anybody that we've seen in the last few years. He's just Tim White. Uh, he, he really has been special this year, hasn't he? He has been very special, and he does remind me of one guy, and that was Acklin. And mm -hmm. we're going to face Acklin this week. He's back after injury with the Red Blacks. But uh, Tim White, not being a, a big, tall, stature uh, type of an individual, still makes those 50-50 balls down the field. And, and that's what makes him so special. Now, what worries me a little bit is that we rely too much on White and not enough on everybody else. If you look at that, I think he got six in a game, and the next highest guy only got two, if I remember correctly. And everybody else was singles, ones. Uh, you, you've got to spread the ball around and, and make it happen. Now, you only threw the ball like 24 times in a game which is okay with me. I don't mind that a bit. You know, that means you're running the ball. And, and it, it brings you to a point where, you know, as a play caller, all play callers uh, know they, they have to fight themselves, Louie, to run the ball. They want to throw the ball. If you would put an offensive line coach back there as a play caller, you'd see a lot more runs in every ball game. But those guys back there in the play calling section are all former receivers and former quarterbacks, and they want to throw it. 
So you, somehow you have to balance all of that. Well, I mean, the Ticats only ran 39 plays <laughs> to compared to the, the 64, I think, that Calgary run, went, ran uh, 22 minutes of possession versus 38 minutes of possession. I mean, when, when you have a game that, that's uh, mismatched the way it was uh, when it comes to those statistics uh, and you come out of it the way you did, is that just because your defense was so good in that first half or is, was, again, we talk about all around team effort? Well, I, I think the all-around part is uh, is it. But, uh, you know, they never took the fight out of the players. Even though Calgary was dominating in all those areas, they were not. They couldn't take the fight out of, out of the Hamilton Tiger Cat players. The players knew what they wanted in the end, and the end was to be a winner in that ball game. And they fought themselves uh, as much as they did, uh, making all the mistakes they made. That, that was like fighting uh, within themselves. But in the end, what turned out to be a a great win, and I think should be a stepping stone for this team. Yeah, first road win, first time winning consecutive games this season. And, you know, as we've mentioned a couple of times, first win in Calgary since 2004. I do want to talk about Joe Bon Santos Knox, too. He went over 100 tackles on the season. Uh, he's been the mainstay back there on defense alongside Cam Kelly and uh, most of the secondary, to be honest. But uh, just what have you seen from from Joe Bon Santos Knox this season? And, uh, and, and, and how important has he been to the success of the Ticats defense? when they're on well I, I think he's the most important guy out there because he's the play caller for uh, the front group and at the same time he produces all the time I mean he's he's never been in a ball game in which you have said something bad basically about Santa I mean he, he's always there he's always uh, consistent in what he does he makes all the calls he makes all the uh, adjustments in there I, I think he's become one of the very uh, best leaders uh, for this Hamilton team. So I would hate to see us go into a ball game without him at the middle linebacker. Yeah, we, we haven't had to do that uh, all for the last two seasons, in fact, is played in every single game since coming over uh, as a free agent. Uh, before we let you go, Coach, uh, you, you mentioned it wasn't perfect for the Ticats. What, 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 was there an area of concern for you in that game on Friday, or what would you be watching at uh, practice this week? Well, I, I think, you know, it goes back to the idea that you've got to coach positive. You've, you've, got, to, you've got to really uh, emphasize to your unit, your group, the O-line coach, the D-line coach, et cetera, that, look, we didn't play perfect. We know that. But we played as we uh, have asked you to play, and that's hard for four quarters. And so, you know, in, in looking at the next game, it, what you did in Calgary is not going to do anything uh, except to help you against the Red Blacks. Now, don't take a step back. Don't let yourself down. You, you're on a roll now. You've got a chance for the playoffs. You've got to win this football game, and you've got to play an excellent game at home. How do you hammer home that message without sounding redundant, or do you even care at that point if you if you are just you don't repeating care. yourself? They don't yeah. care, no. No, coaches are all redundant. Everything coaches do is redundant. It's Monday morning you do this, Tuesday morning you do this, Wednesday there, Thursday's the day before, Friday's game day. You know, everything goes in that order. So we're redundant in everything we do, uh, and hopefully it, it pans out to be good. Um, I, I, again, when you look at this uh, this game against the Red Blacks, it's the last home game here at Tim Hortons Field. And uh, uh, what are you expecting to see? I know it's a few days away, but uh, what do you expect to see from a Red Blacks team that is still in it and for a Ticats team that's looking at finishing off the Ottawa Red Blacks? Well, Bobby Dice, the interim uh, head coach, has been in the league for a long time. And he's the kind of a guy that, you know, he wants to build for next year, but he also wants those, those players who are going to give him that hundred percent effort uh, in a ball game. So he's going to come out uh, with everything he has. And don't forget uh, they ran a trick play or two uh, in the last ball game. uh, And they're going to probably do it again in this game. They've got a good kicking game. They've got good return players. I I don't know if Deadman's going to play in this ball game. Uh, He may be injured for it. But, uh, you know, defensively, they're an excellent football team. I think you got to take them and consider that they're a contender. If, if you lose to them, they become a contender. And, and what you want to do as a champion is knock the contender out.
Yeah, well said. Coach, appreciate this as always. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're more than welcome, Louie. Talk to you again. My thanks to Coach Sal for joining me today. My thanks to you as well because we could not do the show without your support. In fact, the Ticats Audio Network would not exist without your support. So, hey, while you're here, why don't you go check out some of the other great shows we have for you, including a brand new episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker dropping this afternoon, today, Tuesday. Uh, you can also go back and see uh, episodes from yesterday, including a brand new episode of uh, Morielli and Hitch and the CFL This Week with Bubba O. Yeah. That'll do it for us today. We are back tomorrow from practice day three, final practice of the week. Same time, same place here on the Ticats Audio Network. I'm Louis Butko. Hope you have a great day. Ticats today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at ticats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at ticats.ca. Subscribe to the Ticats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.